Hello and welcome to the Nausicast. The Nausicast is where it goes through each movie and this time a music video made by Studio Ghibli in release order. And we discuss our analysis and our research finding. Today, not so many research findings because there's not been a lot written on this. But we're going to try anyways, because, you know, that's what we do. I think we're going to be the first YouTube video really covering this uh, 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 short. And what is it? It is, of course, On Your Mark, the music video released in 1995. It is a music video for a song by the band Chage and Asuka, and it is directed by Hayao Miyazaki. If you don't want to watch the video version, we always provide a download link in the description. Today with me is a small cast of wonderful minds of analysis and uh, general uh, brilliance. With me are Platon Skull. Hello. Um, does perusing Wikipedia count as research findings? <laughs> Just a thought. I really hope it does. And the Sundra. He who thunders. Exactly. And we're going to thunder all over this music video today. So... Or, as already mentioned, it's not a movie. The first thing we're going to cover in this podcast, which is not a movie, but instead a music video released cinematically as well, because it ran just before Whisper of the Heart, which is the movie that we're going to cover in the next episode of the Nazi cast. And it is an animated music video for a rock band. So that, that's a highly unlikely and um, new a, kind a, of experience. A, a rock duo, people. isn't it? Uh... Yeah, a rock duo, exactly. Chaga and Asuka. And just to give a little bit of context, apparently because Miyazaki was already working on Mononoke Hima, he was apparently feeling during the process of writing Mononoke Hime that he was like kind of getting into a writer's block and as a kind of refreshing side project to really get his mind back on track, he started doing this music video. So this is actually Miyazaki at his, like, how should we say, at his, like, attempt to escape writer's block. <laughs> Uh, I, th I think it's uh, pretty telling that Mi Miyazaki's uh, little side project to get the engines going is like uh, s such a visually s spectacular piece of like uh, science fiction animation. Like it's, yeah. it's just, it's, it's not fair. <laughs> yeah. There's so much rich world building going on in these seven minutes it's kind of incredible, like, how it constructs out of historical things and, like, other media and so on. But we'll get into that. Um, another interesting aspect of this, which makes it unique, or rather unique among the Ghibli canon, is that it is apparently the first production that contains computer animation uh, to supplement, like, the cell animation in it. But, you know, this is what the sources say. Uh, what the sources say. Don't trust the sources, trust the Nausicaas, because as we talked about in the last podcast, actually Pomp Poco is the first use of computer animation in anime, uh, not in anime, in Ghibli anime, and I will not have these wrong facts, these fake news, polluting our Ghibli discourse. Then, right, animation historians, you can cite us, we're the first to, uh, we're, we're the first to observe this, uh, Pomp Poco, it, it was uh, the library scene, uh, correct? Exactly, the library yeah. scene. But yeah, here there's use of uh, CG techniques too, which is something that Miyazaki would later again repeat in Mononoke Hime, infamously, or famously, not infamously, because it looks so fucking good in Mononoke Hime. And here, I guess, too, because uh, in the ways that I could identify, like during like the panning shots where the police helicopter is flying through the city, we have a CG shot. Oh yeah, de definitely. Like they're flying through this like tunnel uh, yeah. of, of of like skyscraper lights, and, uh, and th th that that's pretty clearly CG. And there's this weird, there's this eye that like doesn't really look traditionally animated, like, like mm -hmm. uh, on top of the building there, the rating. Um, which maybe this is a good time to like just briefly summarize what what the hell even happens in the in the music video. Yeah, I guess that's a good idea. So it is very non-linear too, which is an interesting choice as well. <laughs> um, guess what would be the best way to approach it? Like, we have a setting. There's like a cyberpunk city underground because humanity now resides underground. And overground we have, I don't know, like we have the picture of like abandoned rural like cities where this huge, how would you describe it? Like this huge bolted together, like lumbering huge mass of 
um, metal, of yeah, rusted yeah, metal. It, it, it yeah, like a huge, a, a huge a, box. A, it looks like it looks like some kind of building that's been like boxed up, so it can't like it's, for some reason it's been like it's been like yeah, like like, like bars been putting them on, on the windows, but like in yeah. giant like metal like walls. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. and, and, and there's uh, signs uh, warning about radioactivity. Like it's it's yeah. clearly supposed to be like uh, the, uh, the the so, some sort of fallout zone, and yeah. humanity has like uh, gone yeah. to this city uh, d- deep underground, where we follow these two uh, p- uh, police officers. This this uh, duo that their designs are uh, based on uh, Chuck and Oscar's looks, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, and we see them um, raid and massacre. Uh, some sort of uh, armed religious cult, yeah. and um, and and they come to, uh, to to rescue this um this angel girl, like at least like she has angel wings, who's uh, who's person, chained up in I a think. in a back room. But uh, Miyazaki yeah, insists on yeah. bird person or bird, bird person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, must resist the Rick and Morty joke. Um, <laughs> no, but um. But, but but yeah, so 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 they rescue her, but she's uh, then taken away by uh, like government officials in hazmat suits to be locked up and studied somewhere else by like uh, not by a cult but by a government instead. And uh, we see these uh, these police officers they they get um, l- like a guilty conscience and they infiltrate the uh, government laboratory pretty easily. Like that, that was that wasn't too hard. Yeah. And uh, they blow up the people in the hazmat suits. They just blow them in the face hole and they get like the, all this inflation fetish, fetish imagery, right? They yep. like, turn into huge balls. <laughs> yeah. It's that easy. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, they're, then, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're still planning for that for quite a while. Like they're, they're yeah, they are. So it's, it's yeah. not like it's just like, oh, just walk this waltz in and just take her. Like, they had a plan. Anyway, like uh, after uh, uh, daring escape from uh, from the city, uh, they uh, drive out uh, to to those uh, apparently radioactive fields, and uh, they uh, they uh, let her f- uh, fly off uh, in into the sky and uh, and and wave goodbye to her, and that's basically the end of uh, hmm. the music video. Uh, but interestingly, like mentioned before, um, it's non it, it it's got a non linear uh, element. Where like we see flash forwards and flashbacks, um, sp- specifically to them finding her and rescuing her, and to uh, to and yep. to them letting her go and fly away, but yep. also we have a really weird uh, sequence where they um, they're escaping in a in a vehicle uh, driving on this long bridge, which start which collapses because of like the government attack helicopters and stuff. And they like plummet uh, d- down uh, and, and, and like try to make the bird person like fly away, um, and then later we see the exact same scene except instead of plummeting down to their deaths, they ram like uh, into the wall of of an old uh, skyscraper building and Spe- escape. Specifically, instead of falling, the um, truck seems to have some kind of um, flight device and starts flying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I, I, I think there's a very specific reason for that, but we'll go into that later. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get, get into that in, in interpretations <laughs> and stuff. But like, uh, yeah. suffice to say, that's a, a lot of um, like sci-fi imagery, uh, vehicles, roads, uh, and uh, the city neon signs. Yeah, exactly, and this this was um, how how many years after like uh, uh, Akira? Uh, that's uh, oh, a decade after. Yeah, a decade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe not not eight, an eight, entire decade. Eight years. But Akira was like yeah. eighty-eight. 87 yeah. was 87 yeah. years almost yeah. a decade yeah. yeah so obviously like Akira has been probably in some way influential on this but i can't help but notice that the city also looks very blade runner like especially with like the flying cars in it yeah oh, the, the, like the flying definitely. cars look like exactly <laughs> like not exactly like out of blade runner but very reminiscent of it yeah and uh, and like that's um and then, and and that's obviously like uh, l- lots of credit to the background artists and uh, and and the design yeah. of the backgrounds because we you get a lot of world building just in, not not just with like the uh, the c- cyberpunk uh, city and like how how quickly you like understand the situations and people's uniforms and stuff like that, but also like the way it's it's made in layers, like you get uh, further up and it, and it goes from being this dark cityscape to to this like light piercing through and these concrete structures uh overgrown with grass and weeds and you get like the sense that this 
the city has been growing downwards for who knows how long. Um, mm. and, and, and that's why it's so dark down there. I think it's a, I yeah, think it's really absolutely. interesting. You, you also see like signs of that there's still people living up there in those like in these squalid conditions. You get some like really brief clips. Uh, it, it, it tells like a lot with a little. Yeah, absolutely. As we are used to by Miyazaki, I, I feel like oftentimes his works already tell you so much through the settings. Like in this one scene where they are, uh, where they near the end, when they're in the car and they have the girl with them and they're driving towards the huge metal structure, you can see like behind them in the background, like as if you like would be driving past trees on the road, like the trees in the background, you see like nuclear power plant, like, uh, 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 What's it called? The things where they like export yeah, chimneys. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah those, those where they the, exactly where the fog, the mist. What's it called? Steam. Yeah, it's called steam. English. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. That like like. Uh. Now that we're speaking of like uh, small animation details, uh, y- you get a lot of like little bits of uh, personality building uh, with, with the main characters. Um, like like spe- specifically, there's there's this uh, brief part where we see them at their like d- desk offices, uh, like writing reports. Maybe it's late at night or something. Yeah. And uh, and 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 you get like um, you you have this uh this sunglasses guy who's like uh like pretty happy go lucky. Uh, he drinks and smokes and stuff like that. Uh, and you have like the uh the the. Uh, I, I'd call him like the main guy who's like m- more like uh, the, the the one who's like who, who's con whose conscience uh, you know really uh, it, it's really gotten to him. Yeah, like it, it feels like they're, they're body pair where like one, one's the heart and the other's like uh, co- coming along, and like like I th- uh, there's some interesting detail there where he has some flowers and uh, like I think it's a bottle of wine or champagne or something, and. Uh, like on his desk, this uh, this main uh, handsome dude, and there's also like a small doll on top of his computer screen. Yeah, a bunny. Yeah, and, 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 like there's a lot you could read into that. Like I I read it as like oh he has or had a daughter or some sort of family, and like that and that might be be a part of why like he he feels this uh, empathy and guilt over over this uh, innocent girl. Maybe that, but also like I got these sense, like the, the the gifts and the flowers and everything that like clearly implies that they've received these gifts from somewhere. And which is in stark like contrast to the earlier scenes where we see them see them mowing down like the cult, where it like more seems like some sort of cruel act rather than these police officers who are so loved that they receive like flowers and gifts. In, in in some capacity, though, I have to wonder, like obviously because they're like stand-ins for the band themselves, if there's like a part of like them being like famous musicians that kind of like is coded into this visually. I don't know. Yeah. But also, even that they, they're supposed to represent the band members, the handsome one looks similar to several characters in Miyazaki works that are usually meant to represent Miyazaki himself. For example, he looks a lot like the dad in, in, um, in, um, um, in Totoro. Um, mm, he looks similar yeah, well, to those kinds of characters. But, but how much of that is just like Ghibli face? Well, yeah, that, but, but there's that's a lot of Ghibli face going on. <laughs> that's just, that specific Ghibli face is only used for characters that Ghibli that Mizaki uses as self insert. Hmm. So, I mean, at some some level, that there has there has to be Miyazaki. I, mean, I, don't know, I, don't I think it's like the, the absolutism of that statement that I that I makes me immediately like uh, so sure about that. But like, you, you might be right. You, you might be right that there's so, something to it there. Um, Ne- nevertheless, he's, he's he's got a handsome face. Uh, we, we we love our boy saving uh, bird people from yeah. <laughs> evil cults, cults and, and nuclear and government experimentation. Yes. Yeah. That too. And I suppose on 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 just to cover like this interesting dimension of it being a music video, right? Um, this entire short, because of its nature as a music video, does not have any dialogue. It does have sound effects, but it does not have dialogue. So I find like that body language and character acting and like setting speaking for themselves has taken on a much more primary role in this one. Specifically also because Miyazaki in an interview said that he kind of 
on purpose kind of disregarded or misinterpreted the lyrics. So even the lyrics don't really clue us in to what's going on here. So it's all like in the uh, uh, visual body language and so on. Like it, it harkens back to a sort of like attempt at a silent film in, uh, in well, silent films also have music, right? But it harkens back to an attempt of a silent film like in anime, which is not something we get quite often, right? Except like in music videos. Yeah, yeah. there's, there's but, just one amazing yeah. scene that has them like at a restaurant and like, like it shows the, the the glasses guy um with his beer and like some like noodles and he's like picking at them but not eating them and then the and our, our handsome like main guy he doesn't have any food and just has water in front of them and you see him just, like like staring off into space like thinking about clearly clearly thinking about how he's going to save the girl or if he's going to or like being guilty in some way it's just how like the characters are like so like actually like beautifully described and like what they're going to do is in like this like half a like half a second clip like two second clip um where no words are exchanged is I, I think pretty incredible yeah but yeah. That, that, that's um that's the thing with music videos as a like uh, cinematic genre they um they, they they are short and they uh they are built around that music uh, which means yeah you can't really have like dialogue uh, you you can't really have a lot of like um or uh, audio uh, like exposition uh, st- stuff like that. Like even the sound effects have to like be somewhat backgrounded. So like it it really requires um, a-, a mastery of the visual language to be uh, t- to be clear, to be Im- evocative and immediately understandable. Which uh, is like like it-, it it sounds like oh you're just doing like the nuts and bolts simple stuff, but doing the simple stuff well enough. For for it to really work, that's uh that that takes some skill. Like like uh there there are a lot of like uh, great directors who um who have or are like d- d- directing uh music videos uh every now and then. Uh, Michael Bay is uh is is one famous example. He he started out doing advertisements and uh uh and and, and yeah music videos with you know helicopters at sunset, stuff like that. Mm. Uh and and it really like. Sh- uh, it, it's a great way to like show um, how, how like even without uh, a, 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 any like particular uh, the like strong plot or characters, Miyazaki still has this ability to just take the to take these specific ideas, present them in in like a very understandable way, and really like make an uh, evocative piece of art like, like that image of the girl flying away into the distance. Uh, like like the, the the feeling that evokes is like you, you don't really need dialogue for that you don't really need much context it's funny because i feel like so much of miyazaki and ghibli's work up to this point is and afterwards is so so much of the meaning has always been like coded in the backgrounds and like the expressions and like there's generally like a lot of the ideas are not like explicitly stated and like it's it's funny to see like a music video where that where the, that kind of like like visual like um environmental storytelling is basically all the storytelling that can be done um from a mm. studio that already mostly does environmental storytelling. It's a perfect fit. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, I I I would say like uh, yeah, the, there's um the, the, there's a fit in that way that that they have this uh really really great sense of. Uh, yeah, world building in the in the background, doing a lot with a little, but but at the same time, I, I don't know. I, th- I think like it doesn't really, like you mentioned earlier, he even deliberately like misinterprets the lyrics. Like like it, yeah, I, I don't think I feel like... it fits together as a like music video in the same way. Like there's, there's obviously a, a, hmm. so, so some some attempts at it. Like um, I I think part of the reason why we have these flashbacks and forwards is to like fit it into like the tone of the song. Um, but uh, I don't know. It 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 feels like it's it, it's a really plot heavy music video, like like relative to other music videos, like like, like they they easily could have, could have like um, made it fit more with the rhythm and focus on the, that evocative imagery over the the, the plot, and like leave more uh, to, to implication. But that that's just a like style. Uh, that's just a creative decision. Yeah, so so I believe like a lot of music videos actually seem to be well misinterpretation of the lyrics is a wrong like w- word here, but like 
deliver it like interesting, unique interpretation of the lyrics. Like I've seen oh. so many music videos where you can clearly see that they visually take some cues from what is being said in the song, but it's clearly not what the song is about. This comes from the unique kind of nature that oftentimes music videos are like done by different artists for a different like artist's piece of work. Like this is such an interesting dynamic too, because it's like, basically two artists working to make a final product without like much involvement of the other one in their part of the thing like someone makes the song the song has all these interesting meanings and feelings and whatnot and the other artist the the, the, the music video director just picks up there and builds their own like creation on top of it and this is often how it ends up in my experience yeah that, that's uh yeah okay i, I, I can definitely see that like how yeah, that that disconnect between uh the the two parts, like it's 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 not, uh it, the way music works with a with a work of cinema, like like a, a feature film where you have someone is scoring the picture, but like there's a dialogue with the director there, like uh, there's yeah. much more like disconnect, like the um the song wasn't like probably wasn't like designed to go with exactly. any particular music video, especially mm -hmm. not one this specific um, yeah the, the yeah. song was a year older already yeah so it yeah, came it out in 94 and like the production started like a bit later like early 95 i believe yeah, it was a uh, it was part of a, a single uh again this is by yeah. chaga and Asuka, who like uh back a big, big deal back in the 90s in, in japan apparently um what, what, one of the first acts to like try and cross over in the in the west with like uh mtv appearances uh stuff yeah. like that and we gotta say the song is a banger, so <laughs> well deserved. Yeah, it's, I believe. it's pretty cool. It's pretty nice. <laughs> but I would say most most music videos are in some way an attempt at interpretation of the song, right? They're, even if they aren't mm -hmm. like interpreting it as it is, I don't think Miyazaki's in, interested in interpreting the song at all. He's a story he wants to tell, and the song is a useful method in which he can tell the story. He says, like, like in the quote in the interview with him, he says, "The title from the phrase on your mark, get set, go." But I've perfectly story the meaning of the phrase in making this film. I made a story set after the end of the story, as the century. Like he's 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 like okay, whatever. Who cares about the song? Let me talk about whatever my my <laughs> visuals. <laughs> okay, so maybe maybe it's just my background. I didn't feel it was that unusual, like in music video creation circles, to do that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I don't know. I I I suspect that when you get Studio Ghibli. Yeah. To make a music video, you give them a lot of creative freedom. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. You, you, you give just other say, people. take it, do whatever you want. Yeah, <laughs> do whatever you want. I, I, <laughs> We're not going to have a dialogue on this. I suspect, <laughs> that's, I suspect that's actually like close to what actually happened because, yeah, come on. Probably. The studio Ghibli, like, a, a, like at the height of their power. Yeah, absolutely. And that's also remarkable because they just made a single music video in their entire like studio career, never again. And even like short films are pretty rare for them. Like the only other short films that we really can point to are the ones that they only show in the like Ghibli cine uh, uh, Ghibli Museum, which we're not gonna be able to go to. <laughs> Pay us on Patreon. For yeah, to you, get you, exclusive you, reviews. <laughs> like yeah, exclusive that, podcasts that's that's in each of those shots. There. <laughs> that's our stretch. That's our further stretch goal is like get us to the Ghibli Museum so we can watch it and make it an episode about those. Exactly. No, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, on on a more um, on on a more serious note, that that um, I I can definitely see how that basic idea of like on your market set go. That I I I think that might be like where like the image of that like girl flying off into the sky came from, and that and from there everything else uh, evolved. It, it might not be, but that's kind of how it feels to me. And it gets back to how like music videos are often about like this like evocative uh, feeling. It's, it's actually one of the reasons why I think Makoto Shinkai should direct music videos and like only that for the rest of his oh. career. He would be amazing at it. Like he wouldn't even need a like plot about like young kids f falling in love with a supernatural twist and like the, the adults uh, shirking responsibility and something mm. like that. Just, just, just take that aesthetic level, that 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 yeah. evocative imagery, and like go go with it. I mean, we're almost there. I mean, he's he's directed a couple of short films, and like if you look at them, they're they're kind of what you want from them. Like sometimes just a three minute like short. 
uh, what was it called? I think Crossroad. Yeah, Crossroad. Yeah, yeah, Crossroad. I think it was even just a TV commercial or something. But it was really good, actually. I think it's <laughs> one of the best things Shinkai has directed. Crazy. Yeah, enough. yeah, exactly. <laughs> like uh, uh, this is really uh, off the beaten path, uh, like tangent. But like, I, yeah. I, I just wanted to get that out there. My coach of Shinkai should direct music videos. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's that's his calling. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. So what what else do, do we got? We got uh, Chaga and Asuka. Uh, yeah, they, they were a pretty big deal. Uh, they split up in uh, actually last year officially, but mm. uh, they, they they had a like um, they they had like a break in the like late zeros uh, start of the uh, teens, and then uh, unfortunately uh, Asuka and his uh, girlfriend were caught with drugs, uh, arrested and convicted for a three-year sentence back in Sad. 2014. And that's basically like the end of them as a duo. Um, uh, Chuck and Asuka, I don't know about him and his girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe they're still getting along. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not a Japanese tabloid. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think this is the kind of podcast where you really get the hot uh, uh, Chaga and Asuka news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, so, that, that, that's going to be in a sequel series, the, the Chaga and Asuka cast. Exactly. The, the <laughs> Chaga and Asuka cast. Perfect. Fits with the Asuka cast. Um, I guess this leads us to transition into our... I guess and into trying to interpret this thing. So a good way to lead into this, I think, is to talk about an interview that is, is printed in Starting Point uh, that Miyazaki gave, which is very short and it's kind of enigmatic. And basically, it contains him saying, "Well, I tried to keep this music video like kind of vague so everyone can get their own interpretation." Like he's kind of just saying what most people engaging with like uh, uh, movies and cinema and art already do, which is take their own interpretations, just run with it. <laughs> but now he's making it explicit. We have Miyazaki's permission to interpret this however we like. So, uh, <laughs> but, but to start off, he gives us one thing we can start with, which is that he offers us an interpretation. And he talks about that the angel represents something like hope. And well, that hope that, that, that's just obvious. Yeah, and that hope can paradoxically mean to let it go where no one can touch it. That That's what Miyazaki offers in that interview. So uh, I guess, what do you feel about this? Well, like, uh, hope is a, like o- obvious, like like the, 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 the whiteness, the uh, like uh, dove-like wings, o- o- obviously like hope uh, for, for like peace and prosperity, especially uh, contrasted with the like... The, disturbing imagery of uh, yeah. the uh, cyber city down there that that, that, that that's that, that's an obvious part uh and, and like the way these two um uh, yeah uh, policemen like ha- have this small rebel like, like the small rebellion this is probably not a that big of a deal compared to like the huge uh system and structures around them but but like it's really important to them i i think i think that's a beautiful way of lo- looking at it like that it doesn't really achieve all that much, but it's something. It's it, they they have they have a bit of hope. They they can get out like, and uh, and have something beautiful out there in the world. Yeah, I, like that I was idea. kind of surprised by the cult too, right? Because uh, maybe Thunder, you also want to say about something about this, but like they go into the cult. The cult has caught hope, or rather, the angel bird girl first. And the idea for me was kind of like that. Um, in this dystopian society where people desperately look to find some meaning, you have these ex- religious extremists, like both like weaponized and like both like obviously wearing these these huge ominous robes. Obviously not like people you want to hang out with. And they've nope. caught this angel and they're like and and she's like beaten down and like lying on the ground, really like defeated, kind of uh, trapped, captured. Yeah, again, so evocative like, imagery that immediately tells the whole story. Like, like, yeah, doomsday yeah. cult is what comes to mind here immediately. Yeah. Like the idea they have trapped hope, like to believe in, in in them, like to have faith in this doomsday cult. Because doomsday cults are usually along the lines of, well, the world is going to end, but if you believe in us, you are going to get to heaven or like you are going to be one of the few who will find some salvation or whatever. So they've kind of like 
taken hope hostage is what my read was on this. But surprisingly enough, like the depiction of the police going in there and shooting them all down, like mowing them all down, is surprisingly like cruel for someone like Miyazaki. So I don't know, like yeah, it's hardcore. Yeah, there's, there's a, yeah, there's a shot where like they're walking, they're wading through the like the, the tons of dead bodies, like covered in blood, and one of the policemen picks up um one of the people, and, and, and like their 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 hood comes up high, and you see it's like a like a young woman, like it's, like she's like wearing lipstick and like has like like she's like seems well kept, and it's like it's it's like this this moment where like okay, so this you you you're in this space where you see these you, you the police like crash into this building with this giant eye, the god is watching you, like they're completely demonized. The moment you walk through their like dead bodies and pick up this young woman, you see like. Oh wow, the government is horribly vi- like, it's violent. Like if, if we assume that this cult has captured hope, it's because they need to f- they need something to believe in. They don't they don't like in this this like, dystopian world. There has to be some kind of some kind of hope that they have, and like so, so you kind of like almost feel bad for the cult in that way. Um, of course, they all just got slaughtered, so you feel bad. Yeah, for and, uh, and that also reason. Like, <laughs> also, they like clearly like mistreated this uh, this innocent yeah. girl. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, they yeah. gave her Coca Cola. Yeah. That's not what you do. For <laughs> yeah, yeah also, that's, that's, that's the up. cruelest thing. You can do. <laughs> uh, but it's it, interesting, I think, because because of the um, like the, the, what was happening in Japan at the time. Like, um, there's this, there was definitely this like um, level of apocalypticism in Japan at the time. Um, there's a, a podcast by Pause and Select on YouTube that goes into detail of, about this subject. But um, it's, a, there's, it's there's, more of a like video essay series, right? Uh, yeah. He has a whole right. thing about anime and the apocalypse. It's it's, yes. a, it's amazing. Uh, I yes, highly yeah. recommend it. Yeah, everyone should watch it. It's amazing. But uh, and this, this 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 anime comes out the same year as um, Neon Genesis Evangelion. It comes like several years after Akira, which kind of started this trend. And there's like there's lots of other anime this time that is this focus on this. And on the same year as this 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 um anime this this this, this music video came out, there was the famous sarin gas attacks on on tokyo um i'm not yeah. th- th- these aren't connected necessarily because those attacks happened after this was finished in production but although but, but it's still a we have to really mention, like topical yeah. coincidence yes yeah. I mean, it's not, it's, it's it not just a coincidence, coincidence I, and also the cult that conducted the gas attacks like was a doomsday cult a very famous infamous even one at the time also like getting some news coverage because of them kind of members and like the cult of personality around the leader so it isn't to be neglected that there was some like relation between this depicted cult and Armstrong and Ryoko. but even if we assume that there wasn't any specific relation there was there must have there's clearly generally a like an idea of doomsday apocalypticism in Japan at the time. Yeah. Like, J- J- Japan's economy was, like, it's, it's terrible at the time. Like, they'd, they'd fallen apart after their 80s, like, like boom. Um, and it's, it's all, there's, there's, there seemed just really generally, like, pessimism reigned in the country, it, it seems. And, and, there's, and, you, and you have this, this, this image of this angel chained up with Coca-Cola, which is, like, I mean, I, I think it's a great image of, like, you know, capitalistic alienation. Like, it's a woman... Tied tied up with a chain and covered in the garbage, the, the, the capitalist garbage, it's taken cap- captive by this cult who are trying to free themselves or maybe they find hope of some kind. I think it's really quite profound just this one image. Like if we follow through with my reading of like this this angel being held hostage by the cult is like sort of the stand-in for an attempted meaning if one attempted like some transcendence she's already covered in trash. She's just lying in the garbage of like capitalism and everything that fell. Off. And we also need to speak to the city, of course, like being a Blade Runner style city. Cyberpunk obviously like refers to a very late stage of capitalism where there's a huge stratification of society along the social classes where you have the skyscraper like tops with like the neon signs where the rich people live in like luxurious man- mansions and at the bottom of like society like literally at the bottom of those huge towers are usually slums of like some pan-Asian kind of like cultural multicultural quality like that's the imagery that cyberpunk uses. Interestingly entails. interestingly here it's is is the other it's kind of the other way around. We don't see actually where the, like the upper class lives, but like uh, we see the slums are like closer to the surface. Um, probably like the, the, yeah. that's where it's neglected. I think that's an inter- that, that's an interesting little uh, bit of world building that just like yeah. makes this setting unique. Like like it it mm. makes it distinct. Uh, but it does still. Choice. It does still retain like the same signifiers, like the 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 deeper parts where like the cult is like in the top of the skyscrapers. Obviously, the cult being like a very rich kind of upper class thing, which is what they usually are because they like kind of mel- milk their uh, uh, members. Um, they are still in like high skyscraper buildings, so obviously like the same iconography of like stuff like Blade Runner is evoked to give us this immediate like cultural recognition. I believe. 
I, I, I do I do want to mention again the um, the slums because I I think I think that that can if, if we wanted to move on they can they can tie um it, tie, it ties this this world this um this Blade Runner esque um like late stage capitalist kind of world into Miyazaki's um ideas of um naturalism right because the um the 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 the, um, the, the slums are at the very top instead of like being this like highly artificial like using literally using CGI to depict it um area that is in the that that, that is that, that that is that is at the bottom that's in the underground that the, that in, in that that the um, cult resides in um the slums are this like there there there's there's moss coming through the walls there's sunlight reaching the the, the these places you can you can see what's going on there's a there's clearly a, there's they're clearly much more in touch with nature at least in their physical proximity to it. Yeah, and the closest thing to nature, and this is, I think, like one of the most remarkable images here is, oh God, I think I've, I don't know in which context I've read or heard this, like, but the whole idea is that even around like Chernobyl, where this huge nuclear disaster happened in the eighties, and oh yeah, yeah, w the, which the, which the concrete structure is, ob like the big box is obviously yeah. like based around the uh, exactly the structure that yeah uh, yeah around that and the, yeah that even around Chernobyl because. People didn't go there. Nature kind of reclaimed that entire environment, and a huge natural forest like found itself around, and like an entire ecosystem found exactly where humanity has kind of failed to inhabit this space, where humanity has kind of, due to some like in crazy like disaster and destruction, has revealed like its failure failures, and this huge enclosure this huge structure obviously like covering up some nuclear disaster of some kind and being like a like a sort of chernobyl reference is around like this rural town which seems completely empty and around it's nature and trees and grass on the on the ground and everything and it's immediately juxtaposed with like our depiction of this extremely neon uh, uh concrete cyber city yeah i, th I think it's an open question in the world of the uh a music video whether the, it's actually dangerous up there or whether like the uh the city's just being paranoid i think you said earlier that uh that like the intention is that like the people are just afraid uh of, of going up there well um, Miyazaki himself said that that after this he's not sure if they can even return anymore because the implication is that you know they might die Right. Okay. Right. But I, I, I think that's an interesting th thing there, yeah. where, uh, like, you obviously you have this this stubborn uh, government keeping it like uh, everything in place. Uh, I don't think it would be like out of place to have like a, a reveal if the story somehow continue that. Well, hang on a second. It's actually pretty safe up here, and like people just keep us, uh, they just keep us down in the in the slums to like keep keep us oppressed and away from nature. I think that would be an interesting uh, interpretation, but yeah, it, it's definitely also like possible that it's just radioactive up there, and that her like angel wings has something to do with that, uh, which is why they're experimenting on her, which is why they're setting her free up there because she can live there while they can't, and that gets to like a whole new th way. What exactly is happening then with like her relationship to radioactivity? I I I don't even like know where that goes. But also, and this is like one of the most like, I would say like essential Miyazaki symbols, the idea of this nuclear reactor being enclosed and then the nature flourishing. This is kind of like the whole castle in the sky idea. The idea that only like human hubris and people acknowledging or like having to take the failures of modernity and like their rapid expansion and growth really is the only thing that seeds ground back to nature in any capacity. And like really this humility in front of that and letting the basically the angel girl fly in front of that nuclear reactor thing is kind of humanity acknowledging like they need to get back in touch with this and need to confront this uh you you know sin of their past in order to really regain and reconnect with the surface world that's at least the read i got and this is like a very common motif in miyazaki i mean yeah. basically that's all nausicaa is about right this is this is just like a continuation of nausicaa in a sense like thematically yeah. Which yeah, is funny because he was yeah. taking a break from Nausicaa, but he makes this work where the cult members wear clothes that look exactly like the clothes the cults wear in the Nausicaa manga, and the girl looks like Nausicaa, and is and very specifically like Nausicaa does in the um, opening shots of the Nausicaa movie, um, in the um in the prophecy, and is a clearly a like bringer of hope. It's like it's it's very clearly like a like almost like a, 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 a condensed version of the whole Nausicaa story. Oh, I, I can I can one up you. Like uh, Miyazaki literally insisted on calling the angel girl Tori Nohito, 
which is the same term he used to refer to Nausicaa when he talked about her. Well, yeah. hmm, how about that? How um, about that? It, interestingly, if we were speaking about the um, whole like flying in front of the, um, the radiator, um, the last quote Miyazaki says, it was, he's quoting his Nausicaa manga in the interview, um, is he says, um, as in Nausicaa, we are like birds forever going beyond that morning, spitting out blood as we fly, which is, I think, really interesting. Damn, that's, to- that's cool as fuck. I want, I want that on the poster. Cause like it's like it's almost it's almost, yeah it's almost like even as as as, as like as, as as hope is like as is, is like is, is being released and being freed in that in that way where you know embodying hope but the hope is putting into this world that may or may not be radiated may or may not be a place where she's just gonna die of the radiation poison above there it's, which is, it speaks really much to the the, the Nasca manga like I mean um, there's a realization near the end of it um, where that um, that the world that is being cleansed by the um, by the by the, the by the toxic jungle cannot be inhabited by humans because the humans are just too oh, God, adapted yeah. to the world um, that we've, we've ah. the polluted, disgusting world we've made. And so the, a pure Those world bums. where people can be, it, no humans can live there. It's not even possible. Such a fucking goosebumps moment to realize like this is the, the same thematic moment. Like the poison, the toxins, like the destruction we caused is also what is cleansing the world. Like around Chernobyl, a forest grows. This is such yeah. a powerful image in my mind. Yeah, and uh, and and like uh, and e- how even like despite of all the dangers and, and and like the possibility that like yeah she she's just like going out into like a, a dead world there's still this insane urgency to like get her out there and get and get her to fly away and like we we are obviously meant to be happy that that she, that she's up there um and and, and like that, that that urgency like even like is is even mir- miraculous in that like weird. Uh, like alternate timeline thing that happens where like their uh, car starts floating and flying and glowing just to like a- a- avoid having them like plummet down. Yeah, like, well, uh, I-, 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 I I'm still not sure entirely sure what's supposed to be happening there, but like it might just be like it's it's evocative, you know? It's it's a music video. I want to speak to that real quick because I I I I I have a, a particular read of that. Um. So the, when it happens the first time, they 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 escape in the car and they, they go along the road. Um, and the, 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 then the road collapses from the helicopters and the road fall plummets and they presumably to their the characters all die. Um, but while they're trying to do, they they try try to get it to fly. And as as it plummets down, if it, it, there's a there's a, a cut and it cuts to um, not just events that we'd seen earlier, but also to um, a um a um. Let me pull it up real quick so I can I'm not making a mistake. <laughs> okay. Um, to, to basically a shot of her flying in the air. It's the first time we've ever seen her flying, which is it, it clearly a reference to the, the future, the very end of the movie, where she does um, fly. Um, but it, it's interesting how they go, it goes through when they they found her. It goes through like when they raided the place and when they saved her, and they and, and then, then it resets. It's like almost like a, it's okay. Let's try again. Let's, let's, let's okay. So the world we messed up and we all died, but let's let's go back and do a world where where the hope is like we're imbued with our hope, and the and the car flies. Like the, the the beauty of the magic of the flight is imbued into the mechanical object of their car. Um, so it's it's almost like they're taking these like. They've they finally been able to embody this 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 hope of flight, this post of freedom, um, this hope of like you know working, looking into the future, into like their their escape effort, into this mechanical human object of the car, which I, I really love. Mm. Yeah, that that's a that's a pretty interesting read too. And I had a, another question for you because just before we got into the podcast, you told me that you had like this how should I say, like, you figured it out, you had completed your reading and you alluded to something like the Soviet Union. I'm oh, yeah. really curious about you hearing, like, going into all aspects of this. Okay, so I think, okay, so the, the, picking Chernobyl, I mean, obviously there's, like, some level of, all, all of like, apocalypse, it had to be a nuclear apocalypse. All, 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 there's so much of the, the apocalyptic imagery at the time had to be nuclear, so that's why they used Chernobyl. Plus, like, the, um, the like, greenery around Chernobyl really fit into Miyazaki's image of, like, of an apocalypse as well. So these, these two elements, I think, are cl- clearly, like, a reason to use Chernobyl. But I think the third reason Miyazaki used Chernobyl was as a reference to the Soviet Union. Because I think Chernobyl is a really powerful image of the end of the Soviet Union. Um, and not often is used. Like, it's just like, just, like, a very clear expression to the world of, like, you know, the incompetence, the failure, the how many people died and, you know, was just literally unknown based on this yeah. stupid industrial mistake that could have been prevented if there weren't the... The officials hadn't lied about it. Um, 
because they wanted to because because they were so because people were so like convinced of this this idea of a you know working Soviet Union that they, 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 there were so many mistakes made because of it and um, I think we've talked about this in early podcasts um, specifically the Porco Rosso one but uh, Mizaki and Takata of course were were, were Marxists um, specifically in the eighties um, but they became I, I, I don't I don't know what to talk about stories much but Mizaki became very um, alienated and um, discouraged by these like socialist ideas specifically after the the stock market crash and the you know the the um, Japanese like um, end of their booming economy plus the um, plus the um, end of the Soviet Union spoke to this like this death of this this meta narrative that Mizaki was so invested in um, and the image of the angel sitting there with a chain around her neck and a um, and the coke bottles like littered around her seems like a very strong image it, when juxtaposed with that of like this Chernobyl esque um, um, nuclear reactor of like the American like almost like capitalist conquest of this you know formerly um, socialist formerly Soviet world that means like he, even though he wasn't of course not like you know he didn't think that there he, he always was suspicious and like not trusting necessarily of like of 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 the um, the greatness of you know the the, the 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 ideology in the country, but it still was in a way an image, a, a symbol to him and a symbol to a lot of people. And the very explicit like capitalization and like taking a part of these ideas, I think, is really strongly appears in this movie and really speaks to to Miyazaki's specific um, um, idea of apocalypticism. And that's, that's Which what. is also how we get to the Coca Cola cans, right? That yeah. the angel is surrounded by the Coca Cola cans. Le- seems like a, I guess, powerful allusion to this kind of American uh, influence you've alluded to. Yeah, th- like that th- that that image of like a uh, like this angel girl chained up with trash and Coca Cola cans around her. Like if that's if that was like a concept art, like. Uh, just a piece of concept art without context. I would like want to know the story. I, I would. It's it's such a great image. But like, they could have used anything. They could have used any um, piece of like you know like sugar water. <laughs> they could so that, that they no, no, but Coca Cola is yeah specifically yeah. That's and that's that's why I, I that that's 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 where I came to the conclusion that specifically in the face of the Chernobyl esque reactor that it has to be something about the set in the Soviet Union. That is like wrapped up in this apocalypticism of this movie. Yeah, it's it's interesting how it crosses over this um like uh the, the, this nu- nuclear disaster and um uh, and an oppressive government with that kind of like uh con- consumerism imagery, uh and 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 like obviously the cyberpunk, which is so so clearly like um a, a capitalist dystopia. Yeah, if you don't yeah. yeah, yeah, that's. If you know Future Boy Conan, you know Miyazaki was already extremely interested in the interaction, the um, the like the, the the ideological um, conflict of socialism and capitalism, as represented by two countries in the in Future Boy Conan. They're very clearly representative of America and the Soviet Union, and and how these alienations and stuff co- come from. You can see it as early as that back in the seventies. So, uh, so, so, so that's our uh, Sherlock Holmes level interpretation here: the, a can of Coke. It's all it took to crack the code. <laughs> so, and I guess there's another like topic of discussion. The, 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 the last one that I have basically on my list is uh, in this interview that is also a starting point. It starts with like a question by the interviewer where, where he says like the police officer, Angel, they make it sound like a film by Momori, Momoru Oshi, obviously in reference to Angel's Egg and Pet Labor. And Miyazaki replies with, Oshi-san is playing koi whether an angel is born or not. So I just went ahead and got this out. I'm not saying it's an angel. It might be a bird person. It doesn't matter either way. <laughs> and this is where also the Tori no Hito ca- came from. But I was like, kind of interested in the, in the specific quote where it's like, Oshi-san is playing koi whether an angel is born or not. Like this is obviously in reference to Angel's Egg and like the idea of hope as depicted in Angel's Egg. And it's way too complicated to go into explaining or discussing Angel's Egg now. But... I wanted to ask you guys if you have, have uh, have you have any thoughts on this idea of just putting the angel there rather than fussing about whether or not the angel is born or not. If we're taking the hope reading of the angel, I I, I don't really care whether like, like there's no way to make create any exposition anyway. Like there's there's no way to to have a character just uh, stated and, and and like to have a we do see an actual like miracle happen. 
So like that that might pretty much indicate that that it's an angel. But like I I don't think being more specific about it would add anything. Like like being too clear with it being a supernatural being would just take the magic out of it. I, I didn't mean it on a on a plot level. Had had you oh, have you uh, seen Angels Egg? I have not. I'm sorry. Okay, but uh, this probably explains your answer. So so okay. Angels Egg is a lot like about the idea of ruminating on religion and the loss of faith, like in a in a very individualized sense. It's a very bleak kind of movie where the question of where hope is to be found and the idea of an angel being born or not could be equated like the idea of hope or transcendent being present in the world at all. So I found this quite interesting in contrast here that Miyazaki would say uh, that he just put the angel there. So for him, hope was never like really absent, right? Mm. I, I think I, I think how I, I, I think how Miyazaki interprets Oshii's world is that is, is, is in, in this loss of faith, in this this kind of like you know this oh my meta narratives are falling apart where I can't understand, I can't relate to the world, I can't. There's no there's no there's no there's no beauty with which I can like understand the world with. And like Miyazaki, I think I think Miyazaki as a person kind of went through that in his like you know kind of kind of loss of faith in um, mm -hmm. communism, right? Um, but I I think he's kind of saying here that like hope was is almost always it's, 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 it was never it was never an ideology it was never like a thing that one could could or not could not believe in it's just a beautiful truth of the world I, that's, that's almost how i feel like Miyazaki is trying to say here mm -hmm. so just like, a thing it, you have it, to it find it exists like it it does exist like it, 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 like there's no doubt about it yeah so you, you you can maybe even find hope like in a garbage dump yeah <laughs> surrounded exactly. By hope <laughs> exactly and not just you can you will find hope there and that is also like such a hugely different statement from like Oshi's uh, statement in Angel's Egg. I don't know how deeply I would want to get into this, but like the whole idea is basically that Oshi had been kind of Christian his most of his life and lost that. And losing that really fucked him up, at least at the time of Angel's Egg. It was a really enigmatic and oppressive film, I want to say. Um, Miyazaki really seemed to have always... Like for Miyazaki, all of it... like. It, if there's one common motif that returns, it's like to see and look tragedy and like the loss of something in the face, to mourn it, but to move past it, to pursue yeah. like, despite the impossibility of utopia, to find some yeah. direction to move into. Yeah, it's the, it, it, it's it's one of the ideas of, at the core of most of his works, and like to to get it across uh, so succinctly and so, and and with just the. Uh, just the imagery uh and, and like animation alone like ju just just speaks to, to his uh his ability absolutely okay so if n neither of you have anything left i think that just about wraps it up yeah yeah that uh, okay. I, I i think that's gonna be our record for uh most time talked about compared to the length of the actual thing <laughs> it's true in absolute as well as in relative terms. <laughs> yes. Yes, definitely. Okay. Oh, no, um, no. Ju ju just just wait until our 10-hour uh, uh, so dissection guess. of uh, <laughs> of Princess Mononoke. <laughs> so, well, even then, <laughs> even then, listen, Mononoke, like two hours, five times two hours is ten hours, like five times the length. I don't know. We're like 50 minutes in into a seven-minute kind of thing. That's almost ten times, you know? You know, that, that, that's yeah. this. Well, we're, 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 we're drawing it out now. Uh, yeah. We're drawing it out now. Yeah. We want to set the record. All right, never mind. <laughs> I want to say, as always, thanks for listening to the Nausicaast. Also, check out our Discord server if you want to discuss films or music videos or anything else with us. And consider supporting our mic quality by giving us money on Patreon and maybe financing our travel to Japan to the Ghibli Museum to review all the Ghibli films at the Ghibli Museum at patreon.com slash Nausicaast with double A. Links are all in the description. And as you can tell from this episode, we are completionists. Yes, we indeed aim to talk about everything Ghibli, and we would be so deeply disappointed if we couldn't deliver, uh, couldn't bestow onto you the pleasures of talking about the Ghibli shots and having had a Japanese vacation on your dime. <laughs> that would really <laughs> break my heart if we couldn't do that. All right, yeah. N next time is a whisper of the heart, right? Exactly. One of the Wait, this is this. Whisper of the Heart will be the second film not directed by Ta uh, Miyazaki or Takahara, and it's gonna have some tragic production backgrounds just to give some foreshadowing. See you in a couple of weeks when we release the Whisper of the Heart episode. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>